Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about the another time series for accounting methodology which is ARIMA. So ARIMA stands for Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average. So it is one of the finest methodology uh, for doing the time series for accounting. That means for accounting for the data that is distributed over time. So for example, your sales data is distributed over months, quarters or years and you want to do the forecasting that what will be the sales in the next month, quarter or year. So in a similar cases, it can be anywhere, you know, you want to predict the losses or, or things like that. Then ARIMA has become really, really powerful because uh, it is based on the assumption that over a period of times the current values or related values are correlated with their immediate previous or n previous values that means there is a correlation present either with the previous value which is uh, an immediate previous or nth previous that means the second previous or third previous it is based on that assumption and if a, this assumption is there then you can go ahead and uh, do the ARIMA based forecasting or apply the ARIMA based forecasting. So what is the method? So ARIMA is based on the method of PDQ where P stands for the value from partial autocorrelation. T is the lag difference between current and previous values and Q is the value from autocorrelation. So I will show you in a, a couple of minutes that what what they are and it's basically uh, the number of these numbers we need to provide to an ARIMA method to compute the model for you based on the existing values and then you can go ahead and forecast for the future values. All right. So let's go ahead and see the how we can determine the value of P, D and Q. So for P. Us, I'm sorry for D that's how the value you will going to recognize so on the first column you can see the values which is 51 54 57 and all so these are like your real values let's say this is the number of head count maybe in your company or department and your idea is that you want to forecast based on this then what will be the head count in next quarter or things like that so so that's the head count but and lag one is basically saying that uh, you will uh, you will not count the value one but you will move you will start 51 right from the second value so and 54 here 57 is here so so on and so forth and as you can see the last value will be removed so that's that is what we call lag difference of one second lag difference is that you will start after two observations so 51 is coming here in front of 57 54 is coming here in, in front of 55. So as I mentioned earlier, it is based on the assumption. So if I go back and show you that it is based on the assumption that over a period of times, the current values or related values are correlated with their immediate previous or n previous values. Now the previous value as in this case is immediate previous is this one and two immediate periods are here so that's the assumption we are going ahead with that these values are correlated and with that we will go ahead and uh, do the time series forecasting so if the lag one value or if we let's say provide for difference the value of d if we provide one so the value will be one for d if we are if we are applying the level the lag 2 value as d is equals to 2 and see that the model is improving based on that then the d value in that model arima pdq value so the d value will be 2 now let's see how you will find the p value and q value so if i go back and show you that p stands for value from partial autocorrelation that's the important thing and q is the value from autocorrelation so let's go ahead and see that so here we have already identified d and here we have acf which is autocorrelation function that means the from here the q value will come and this is p acf that means partial autocorrelation function so based on this 
we will see and how we will identify we will going to take how we're going to take a value is it's basically dependent on these uh, limits which you are saying the downward and upper limit so if it is saying that uh, one two or three values are going beyond the limit you will going to capture three for q and here in case of pacf the first lag value is going out of bounds and you will take p value as one so your function will be if i show you here for p value it will be one for let's say we go ahead with the difference one to test the model so we will take d is equals to one and for q it will be three right so that's that's how your model will be if you want to experiment then what you can do is you can change the value of d here from one to two because you have the flexibility so you can go ahead with two and how you will decide the uh, model simply based on the resultant value and the validation techniques that are there for example p value and all and uh, it so you you can have a number of options like d one two three four so the number of uh, values for difference is increasing your your model will going to have more and more parameters but less and less values so it may not good give good results so it's really a matter of uh, checking up with the with the you know changing the parameters and trying to see which one is making sense so that's arima 113 or 123 model that that you can apply if you are not so sure and you are not getting the right uh, output which is desired what you can do is you can use the function auto dot arima within, within the r or r studio what it does is it it in the back end it does all of these you know checking on which lag it is doing good which what is the level of acf and pacf and try to do you know permutation combination and give you the best outcome so if if you do not want to go in all of this headache and just want to focus on concentrate on the result that which model what is the best model then you can go ahead and use the auto dot arima now after this um uh, normal or the uh, general question which comes into the mind okay we have understood the difference okay this is quite clear enough from acf we can identify this what from pacf we can identify this but uh, what what does this really mean so acf as I said, it's it's basically a correlation between the uh, values. So here in this case, uh, from the immediate previous value, if we have taken d is equals to one, if we have taken d is equals to two, that means a correlation or a linear correlation between the two values. But here in the case of partial autocorrelation, it not only takes the correlation function into account, but it also take into account the interval between them and with that adjustment it tries to remove the linearity and try to see if we don't have the linearity then how the values are correlated so in that way it tried to rationalize the uh, the entire model by taking not only account the lagged difference but also the value of interval between them so with the help of these three factors your arima models uh, basically uh, try to fine tune fine-tune your model and you can either use uh, the manual way of uh, specifying the parameters and then identifying which model is working best for you or you can go ahead and use the auto arima which in just one quick command gives you the best output so that's the uh, that's the theory uh, i wanted to uh, tell you behind the arima before i move ahead and give you the the real real life example about uh, what what arima is and how you can execute it in a uh, in the r or r studio so in the next video definitely i will going to talk about this uh, about how you can implement it which is relatively very simple as you can imagine from the previous uh, uh, exponential methods exponential regression methods that we had discussed that it's like you have to just go ahead and execute the command and just test the result and uh, you know go ahead and you know do start doing the forecasting and the output will be in front of you but what i would really like you to do is go ahead and uh, check uh, some of the sites about 
Auto Arima, for example, Kaggle and all, and try to get their data set from the competition. And based on the example that I will show you in the next video, um, go ahead and try and test it based on this theory and try to interpret it in a theoretical way because once you understand this acf pacf difference i think after that it's it's pretty easy i mean even in the interview let's say you are in interview and anybody can ask okay you can use auto arima it will give you everything but what is the machinery or what is the configuration behind it how you will identify acf pacf what it really means so I have given you a short description a few minutes back, but it will really, really help you if you can get a detailed understanding with the with the uh, any standard websites. So with that, I will conclude this video and I will meet you in the new video with the implementation of Arima or Auto or Arima methods within the R and R2 Studio.